Welcome everybody to part two of my series on how we're building a soundproof studio in a prefabricated shed here in Nashville. So some of you guys may have already watched part one and so you're pretty excited for part two here. If you haven't already watched part one, there's a link in the description below so you can go back and watch that. Before we jump in, I do have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. If you are trying to build a soundproof studio in a shed, definitely check this out. This will help you decide if the shed is the best way to go. You'll learn a ton about soundproofing in general and how it applies to your own soundproof studio design. So to start watching that right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to build a soundproof studio in a prefabricated shed part two. In part one, we left off with basically beefing up the sidewalls, talking about laying the foundation on the shed, and some of the difficulties with just getting the basic structure ready to go for soundproofing. In part two, we're gonna talk about the actual soundproofing construction process. This all starts with our double walls. So now that the outside walls are complete, Henry and his team built a second wall with a one inch air gap from the outside wall all the way around the studio. Now the studio is a little bit unique because it does have a little space for a kitchen. It has a little storage closet where the uh, ERV is going to go and other things. And then there's also an entryway. So the actual studio is in the back half of the uh, shed. And then there's also a loft above, which is also very unique. So this double wall system is a little more complex because we have the double wall going around the entire outside perimeter, but then the inside walls don't need to be as beefed up as the outside walls so that we can maintain that consistency of the double wall around the entire shell of the studio. An important aspect of the double wall system is to make sure that you have some sort of sway bracing installed. This will help from the wall swaying, especially if you have a heavy door on that wall. Uh, this can make the wall move. So to connect the wall to the outside structure, which usually is a no-no in soundproofing, it's okay if you buy specialty soundproofing clips. In this design, we use the IB3 clips. Uh, you can buy those from the soundproofing company or other soundproofing suppliers. And I've also recommended Mason Industries sway bracing clips, uh, like the Wick isolation clip is a good one as well and is probably actually higher quality than the IB3 clips. Number two is the spray foam. This is a unique aspect. Uh, we've never done this before with any of our soundproof designs that Henry has worked on here in Nashville, but it's a really cool idea because what it does do is it helps with roof ventilation. So when you have a cathedral ceiling like this studio design has and like my own studio here in Nashville has, you need to have some sort of ventilation system so moisture doesn't develop on the bottom side of your roof, creating moisture problems through your drywall and a nightmare. So to compensate for that, if you use spray foam, this will help with the moisture buildup on the bottom of your roof. And it also insulates your studio as well. What it does not do is help with soundproofing. So unfortunately you have to spray foam the entire studio like we did here, and then you would add insulation after the fact. So you can see here that Henry, once the double wall system was built, he hired in a crew that's installed the spray foam around all the walls and the ceiling. Once the spray foam has been installed, the next step is to add the putty pads and the insulation. So putty pads are pretty similar to what they sound like. They are square pads that are moldable putty that help with stopping sound from passing through your electrical boxes. It's best practice to put your putty pads around the back of all your electrical outlets, light switches, and your electrical block boxes for your overhead lights as well. Any place where you have an opening in your wall, you're gonna to wanna to put this putty pad around it so it will help isolate sound that can travel through one wall and then through the electrical box into your studio. Once the putty pads are in place, you can go ahead and start installing the insulation. I always recommend that you use the cheapest insulation that offers you the right amount of actual climate control in your studio. So for this studio, I'm not exactly sure which type of R value Henry used, but because of the spray foam, he probably didn't have to worry so much about climate control. So the insulation is primarily being used for soundproofing purposes to create a mass spring mass system, which is what the double wall system is. So 
The insulation is installed on all the walls and it is also installed on the ceiling. And this will make sure that your studio is well insulated and soundproof as well. After the insulation is installed, Henry and his team went ahead and installed all the hat channels and the IB1 acoustic clips. The hat channels are a great system for decoupling your ceiling from your roof rafters. In a cathedral ceiling like this, it's way easier to use a hat channel system than to build a secondary complete ceiling off of your inside wall. It's also more cost effective to use a hat channel system. So you can see here that Henry and his team have installed the hat channel system across the entire ceiling, across the ceiling in the loft, and also across the support beam of the loft. And this will help with the isolation there. With more complicated designs like this one, when you have a loft in multiple rooms, you really need to think carefully through your design with your hat channel system. This is where having a little bit of experience can definitely help you out. Now, the loft is something I would never recommend having installed in the prefabrication stage. I would highly recommend if you want a loft to install it after the fact and build it off of your inside wall so that the loft itself is soundproof. In the case of this studio shed build, Henry was dealt the cards that he was given and he did his best to try to figure out a system that would work for soundproofing the loft. In the end, he ended up installing these U-shaped blocks from RLX that helped to lift the floor off of the existing beams that were connected to the outside structure for the loft. Now, like I said, this is not perfect soundproofing. It's not something I would recommend from the start. I do not recommend these RLX products by any means, but when you're in a pinch, they can be better than nothing. And our goal was to try to reduce the sound transmission that would travel from the outside walls into the actual structural braces of the loft itself and then up into the floor. So now we've technically, and I put it in air quotes, technically decoupled that floor from the bracing below it, or at least reduce some of the sound tr transmission using these U-boat floating RLX pads. Now, Henry, I believe, also added some weight to that floor, and he added some support braces underneath the floor to compensate for the added weight of the loft floor. Remember, mass is one of the number one ways to increase sound isolation, so by adding more mass to this loft floor, we're also increasing our isolation. The next step of the process is to add the drywall, the green glue, and the acoustic caulk. So this is where it gets really fun and you start to see your studio come together. Here you can see that Henry and his team have added two layers of 5 8 inch drywall with green glue in the middle. It creates a solid piece of mass and the green glue layer in the middle helps with damping which also has been proven to help with low frequency transmission loss and also a generalized greater STC rating than if you had just two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. So with this studio design, we added the green glue and the 5 8 inch drywall around all of our walls and our ceiling. And in the entryway, it's a little more complicated. There's because we have the outside wall, which is a double wall and the inside wall of our entryway, it kind of works as a double wall system, more or less. But because we have such a big gap there, that's going to help with our isolation tremendously. So there's two layers of drywall on the inside, and then there's going to be one layer of drywall on the entryway of the uh, vestibule area. The two layers of drywall is attached directly to the hat channels. You want to make sure that you don't screw through and hit any wood studs. That will ruin your entire system. Once the drywall is in place, you can go ahead and use acoustic caulk to seal all of the places where the walls meet the floor, where all the walls meet in the corners, and where your walls and ceiling drywall pieces meet together. Then you can go ahead and sand and mud your drywall like you normally would with any normal construction. So the barn doors in the entryway to the soundproof shed pose a unique soundproofing problem. And this is one that Henry is still working on, but he added two layers of 5 8 inch drywall to the back of both of the barn doors to add mass to the barn doors. And they are much heavier. This system is not complete until the entire inside is finished so that we can create an airtight seal around these barn doors. So until that is done, they're not technically soundproof, but it's important in this stage to add mass to the back of those barn doors. Now, during the 
installation of the drywall, you can also install your mini split. And it's actually a good idea to potentially put some drywall directly behind your mini split and mount it before you do the rest of the drywall. And you can run all of the piping from the mini split and cabling through your double wall system and out to the condenser in the outside. This helps with reducing any sound transmission that might come from the piping and touch your walls. So getting it between those double wall system is great. If you don't have a double wall system, you can still do your best to try to run the piping through your wall uh, and reduce as much sound tra transmission as possible. It's important to remember that the mini split does not act as a ventilation system. It simply will help with heating and cooling, and it actually does have a dry mode, which helps with also dehumidification. So it will not give you fresh air. So for that, we are going to be installing a ventilation system, and that will be in part three of the studio video. Lastly, with this part two of this build, Henry installed the outside window. In this design, there's just gonna be one large window at the front facing wall when you walk into the studio. It's bringing in a lot of beautiful natural light and it's high enough that people won't be able to look into the studio. This outside wall is made of uh, laminate or tempered glass. I'll ask Henry which one he used for this design. Either one works and both offer great soundproofing capabilities. The other thing is you want to buy the thickest glass you can possibly afford. Uh, for my studio, we ended up using half an inch and three eighths of an inch glass. Having differing uh, thicknesses of glass also helps with the soundproofing. For this outside window, Henry and his team built out a frame for it and pushed it into place along the framing blocks. And then they used DAP amp sealant, which is a all purpose sealant it's supposed to be better than silicone. And Henry chose it for this project to help with creating that airtight and weatherproof seal around the glass. Once that sealant is in, you can then install the trim just using a nailer. You can install the outside trim all the way around your window. And that's pretty much it for the window. It's not rocket science. It's just really making sure you get the right windows, build the frame, make sure it's sitting in place and seal it up airtight like you would everything else in your studio. All right, that is part two of the Soundproof Shed studio design here in Nashville, Tennessee. I will probably make a part three videos to show you the final aspects of the studio and uh, stay tuned for that. If you are on this journey of trying to build something similar to this in your own backyard, I highly recommend checking out my free soundproofing workshop. You can go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. Thank you all so much for watching or listening on the podcast. I look forward to seeing you every single week with some more soundproofing tips and advice. Thanks. Mm -hmm.